uh, nature has been a part of the culture for like forever. Environment and culture are quite closely connected. And in a way, I sometimes use the term that the glacier is in my blood. I just really love uh, walking on the glacier, hearing the sound of the ice as it sort of crunches a bit under my feet, uh, feeling the cool air, uh, seeing the streams and of water. So it's like, it's ingrained into everything we do. Mm -hmm. And talking about the weather in Iceland is not like talking about the weather in other countries. Yeah. It's like, it's always a conversation. It's always, we're so, we're so entrenched in it. It's, it's just, it's a part of who we are. Yeah, the first time when I came here was 2013. I came because of horses, like a lot of German girls. But I stayed because of the people. I do a lot of like hiking, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time outdoors. Uh, we are absolutely depending on nature, so we have to be very, very careful uh, how we treat nature and, and, and we have to respect nature. After the uh, eruption in Eyjafjallajökull in 2010, uh, we had an explosion of tourism. Uh, it was uh, sort of went into a turbo phase. I mean, the Icelandic government just really worked with it, with the with the, with the eruptions. They really, really worked with it and used it to advertise us. It was a pretty intense PR stunt. <laughs> Here the tourism uh, grows about 30% every year, so from 2014 and 2015 it grew 30%, then 2015 and 2016 it grew again 30%, so it grows even rapidly every year now. The numbers that we're seeing this year, 2017, uh, maybe uh, the numbers of tourists coming to Iceland are maybe five or six times uh, what we had in 2010. And this is happening over such a short period of time that it puts an immense strain on the infrastructure. I mean, I think we can probably deal with this large number of foreign visitors if we had the proper facilities, if we had enough people, and, and so forth. Um, but we don't. So my opinion on the tourism is uh Definitely, it's like it's my living. So of course, I really enjoy having all these people visiting the country and showing them around. Uh, but I feel like it's getting a little bit out of hand. So uh, you really notice it, like from year to years, how tourism was increasing <laughs> because the places that used to have like only me and maybe my family are not like crowded with people. I am not that. really okay with the tourism here. It's mm -hmm. just it's too much. We uh, have this problem where, where uh, people are coming to areas of high natural value and by coming to these areas in too large numbers or too rapidly or without the proper infrastructure uh, there is the risk that they cause damage and this has happened in many popular places in Iceland uh, and um, so this is the problem of loving nature to death is that people want to go to places like this, but because so many people want to come uh, and during a short period of time, uh, they cause damage and they reduce the value. It may not destroy the nature completely, but they reduce its value. So at some point, people stop coming because the place is, is ruined. Or we don't have the infrastructure to take all the tourism. Like, the streets are not fixed enough. And also a lot of tourists are, they don't really care what they are leaving, like trash, or just go wherever they want, although it's like in nature, what they could destroy. Uh, it's been super crowded, mm -hmm. so some places around the country are not 
prepared to take that many tours in one spot, so a lot of the nature has been ruined. Mm -hmm. Well, for example, like they did, don't have proper pathways around mm -hmm. some areas. Yeah. So it's just people walk everywhere, and also like here we grow up learning like you can't walk on moss, you can't walk on lava fields, and yeah. like that. Um, tourists don't you know grow up with this, so yeah. they'll just walk on the moss. It's just too much right now. It's just way too much mm -hmm. and there's just no way we can handle all this and it's just gonna ruin the, mm -hmm. the uh, country. All, the, all of them are just looking through their, through their cameras so they have something to look at when they come back, but actually if you think about it, when you are like taking pictures of everything all the time, you have your phone all the time in front of you. And this is actually pretty stupid because the nature is so beautiful and you should maybe just take your phone, put it away and enjoy what you see. I think the, the, the tourism trends in, in recent years and decades have sort of worked against um, being a true traveler. Um, it, it's much of, much of more of an immediate experience, uh, getting a nice photo, and then of course sharing it, preferably you know, immediately, so that other people can see that you're in a beautiful place. I mean, I understand this. This is very human, um, but uh, I'm hoping that when people have more experience in traveling, that they will eventually understand that it's they get much more from the trip if they take time. If they give themselves time and allow themselves to engage with the cultures that they're visiting, the environments that they're viewing or, or traveling through, and slowing down basically, uh, not just trying to tick off the bucket list in, in three days or whatever, but uh, going slowly and having a deeper e experience in uh, fewer fewer places, getting to know them and even forming an attachment, which is very valuable, I admit, to have attachment to environments and to other people and cultures. And that's, uh, that's what I think traveling should be about. It's by uh, careful management uh, on many levels. It means managing, uh, trying to manage somehow how many people come to the country. And this is totally unmanaged at the moment and it's difficult to do so. And the second is to, to try to uh, distribute the numbers of tourists coming to the country to more places so that uh, there's less congestion in the most popular parts. But that's also very difficult because people have a bucket list and uh, that they've basically gotten because they've seen where other people have gone and uh, they say, oh, beautiful place, I have to go there. And uh, so the government had made some attempts to to distribute tours, but you know, it's really just it's very difficult, maybe impossible. And then thirdly, to uh, in places that you know are important to tourism, that, that you know that tourists are going to go to whatever you try to do, then you need to have the infrastructure and the manpower and the foresight to plan so that you put in tracks put in uh, other necessary infrastructure, uh, toilets for example, simple thing, information, uh, rangers, um, things that can help you mitigate the damage or, or minimize the damage that's caused by these tourists. So we are not really like able to provide the service for all the people that we are getting here uh, at the moment, but it's uh, it's definitely something that we have to start thinking more about and be like more aware that we can't just have everyone and then like eventually it will at some point everything that rice will go down so we have to realize that uh, we can't just keep going like 
doing more and more so we have to sort of like stabilize it and get more control of all the people that are visiting so we can provide the people good service and show them everything that we have to offer before we destroy it. I think we have to start with limiting how many people can, can come here mm -hmm. and absolutely educating people that are coming here like what you cannot do and what you can do. There is just so much that people can, how many people can be here like all the uh, accommodations, all the hotels and so forth are almost full from just for almost uh, a year. Many houses are being torn down and, and rebuilt as hotels and so there's a lot of construction the, the roads are closed because, and even just small streets, but it's like, it's everywhere and we feel it constantly. And it's kind of, it's not for us. So it's like, hotels are hijacking the culture that we want to preserve. Mm -hmm. And the culture of this town that's actually really interesting and people come here to see it. You should care more about that, what, we, what Iceland has to offer them and just take care of their stuff and don't leave it everywhere and also they should think about that not everything here is made for tourists because they are also going on like private land sometimes you have to respect the nature uh, whether you are a tourist or not you know it's it's um, we only have this this planet and we have to we have to be careful and we have to take notice of what is happening Closer